This time I'm making a lovely soft teddy coat. The coat is so soft it feels great. The coat is worked up in single crochet, so it is really easy. The pattern is in US terms and the coat is easy to adjust to any size. The free rhythm pattern can be found in my blog. The link to the website is in the description box down below. If you like this tutorial, give me a thumbs up. And if you aren't subscribed yet and you want to, then click the subscribe button and the bell button next to it so you never miss another video. For this project, I used this super soft panda yarn from Ice Yarns. I got four packs, but I write in the description box down below how many skeins I used. This panda yarn is a 100% microfiber. 100 grams is about 80 meters. The recommended hook size is a 7 millimeter. I'm going to use also a 7 millimeter. This yarn is a number 6 and it is incredibly soft. So we begin this pattern with some measurements. In the pattern on the website you can find this drawing. There you can write down your measurements or you write them down on a piece of paper. First we measure for the back panel. Measure around the widest part of your body. For the upper part of your body, the widest part, and divide that by 2. Write that number down at number 1. So for me that is 48 centimeters, or about 19 inches. This is the width of your back panel. Then measure from the neck to where you want your coat to fall. This is the height of your coat and write that down at number 2. For me that is 62 centimeters or 24 inches. Then for the side panels we measure from the armpit to where you want your coat to fall and write that number down at number 3. This is the height of the side panel. Then divide the width of the back panel. So for me that was 48 centimeters or 19 inches. Divide that by 6. So the number you wrote down, divide that by 6. And this is the width of the side panel and write that down at number four. Then we need to measure for the front panels. The front panel gets the same height as the back. And for the width, divide the width of the back by three and add the width of the side panel. So for me, that is 48 centimeters or 19 inches divided by three. That is 16 centimeters or six inches for me. And I add the width of the side panel, for me that is 8 centimeters or about 3 inches. Then I have 24 centimeters for the front panel. I write that number down at number 5. So divide the width of the back by 3 and add the width of the side panel and write that down at number 5. Then you have the height of your coat, so the height of the back, and you subtract 10 centimeters or 4 inches and that is the height you need to work up before you make the top smaller so where your neckline begins and then you have all your measurements and we are good to go to start our pattern let's begin we start this pattern by making the back panel and therefore we chain the width you wrote down at number one so for me that is 48 centimeters or about 19 inches so I chain until I have that length. So make a slip knot on your hook and then chain until you have the length you wrote down at number one. If you did that, then add three more chains. Because by working up the single crochets, your work becomes a little bit shorter. So we work three extra and then it is a little bit difficult working with this yarn but after a while it gets easier so the loop on your hook doesn't count as a stitch and we skip the first stitch and insert in the next and if you you can feel with your fingers and find the holes where to insert your hook so we skip the loop on our hook and the first stitch and then insert in the next and make a single crochet so like this then feel for the next stitch see here it is 
and then insert and make a single crochet and work one single crochet in every stitch across so you can feel your fingers where the next stitch is and then you make another single crochet so single crochet all the way to the other side making one single crochet in every stitch across and then I'll meet you back so I made the whole row of single crochets and of course this is a shorter piece because I'm showing you how to do it your chain is much longer than this one at the end of the row you chain one turn your work we chain one turn of work after every row and then fill with your finger and make single crochets in every stitch across so starting in the first stitch and every stitch across and you can see the stitches in between the fluff but it I think it's easier when you feel with your fingers then you can feel the holes where to insert your hook and it becomes much easier when you practice a little bit so make one single crochet in every stitch across at the end chain one turn your work and work single crochet stitches back work this up until the height is the number you wrote down at number two so for me I work it up until my work is 62 centimeters or 24 inches in height and the width of course is 48 centimeters or 19 inches for me and maybe you need to make your work a little bit wider or, sh or a little bit shorter then that's totally fine so work your back panel just a rectangle making rows of single crochets chain one turn your work and work your way back until the work is the height you wrote down at number two and then I'll meet you back my back panel is done I worked up 66 rows to get my height maybe you need more maybe you need less you want your coat a little bit longer or shorter then that is totally fine so at the end you can cut your yarn bind off and uh, weave on your end and then we start our side panels so you can put this out of the way for our side panels it is the same as for the back panel only for the side panels you make two two of the same panels and we make them a lot smaller and a bit shorter so make a slip knot on your hook like this and then chain the amount of stitches you need to get the width you wrote down at number four so for me that is eight centimeter so I chain up 80, eight centimeter and then one extra and then it's the same as for the back panel you the doesn't the the loop on your hook doesn't count as a stitch you skip the first stitch feel with your fingers the next stitch and make a single crochet in that stitch and in every stitch across make your chain loose so you can easily insert your hook and make in every stitch a single crochet until you are at the end then chain one turn your work and work your way back and then keep working on rows of single crochets until your work is the height you wrote down at number three so you get another rectangle but then a smaller one and make two so this is one make another one exactly the same so keep working and when I have my desired height then I'll meet you back my side panel is done I make another one exactly the same way and then it is time to make the front panels for the front panel you make a slip knot on your hook and we make also two front panels so we make two exactly the same front panels so you chain up 
the width you wrote down at number five. So for me, that is 32 centimeters. So chain up until you have 32 centimeters and then skip the loop on your hook, skip the first stitch and insert in the next and then make a single crochet and make a single crochet in every stitch across. At the end of the row, you chain one turn your work and work your way back. Repeat this process until your work is the height you wrote down at number six. Then don't bind off. Then I'll meet you back and show you how to finish the top of the front panel. But now it's just working rows of single crochet. At the end, chain one, turn your work and work your way back until the height is the length you wrote down at number six. And then I'll meet you back. Okay, I worked up my front panel until the height I wrote down at number six. And now it is time to make the upper half of the front panel. And therefore you measure at one side. So it doesn't matter if it is on this side or on this side. But if you end your work here and you need to chain one turn your work on this side, then measure it on this side. If you are ended your row on this side, then measure on the opposite side. So I ended my row here. I worked a little bit up to here already. But I need to measure from this side. And what do we measure? We measure the width of the side panel. So the width you wrote down at number four, you, wrote, you measure on this side. And then mark this with a stitch marker. So here we end our front panel. This part is, is done. So then chain one, turn your work and work normal single crochet stitches until, let me, until you reach the stitch with the stitch marker. So I need one more stitch in the stitch with the stitch marker and then my row for the top is done. So we don't work all the way to the end. So you leave out the width you wrote down at number four. And this will be the color at the front. So if you reach the stitch with a stitch marker and you have put in a single crochet, then chain one, turn your work and work your way back. So feel where the first stitch is and make a single crochet in every stitch across. And at the end you make a, and you see inserting your hook will be a lot easier when you get to know the yarn and you know how it works up. So you don't have to feel it with your finger anymore, you can. work it like this. So work it all the way to the end. At the end, chain one, turn your work and work your way back until the last stitch, then chain one, turn your work and work your way this way. We work rows of single crochet for the shorter version until total length of the panel is the same length, same height as the back panel. So for me that is 62 centimeters or 24 inches. So I work up the total length until I have a total of 62 centimeters and 24 inches. And then I repeat this one more time. So I have a back panel, two side panels and two front panels. And then I'll meet you back. Okay, I finished my back panel, my two side panels and my two front panels. And now it is time to assemble the body. We do that by attaching the side panel to the side of the back panel and the front panel to the other side of the side panel. So you see in this picture how you lay your work and I'm going to show you how to sew the pieces together. So lay your work like in the picture and then I'll show you how to sew them together. Here I have my side panel and this is my back panel. Here is the bottom of my back panel and here's the bottom of my side panel. And I have a long tail here 
that I use to sew the two together. So thread your needle and then we start. We have our yarn coming out of the side panel. So we, we go to the bottom of the back panel and then from bottom to top you insert your needle through and pull and then go to the side panel insert on the two loops so your seam will be sturdy and then you go to the side panel from bottom to top through the back panel and from bottom to top through the side panel from bottom to top through the back panel through the side panel through the back panel and then every once in a while pull your work so your seam is nice and invisible work your way up all the way to the end of the side panel and then you have about um, five inches four to five inches left on your back panel and then bind off weaving your end and then i'll show you how to attach the front panel at this side of the side panel so close this side bind off and weave in your end and then i'll meet you back to show you how to attach the front panel okay my side panel is attached to my back panel and now it's time to attach the front panel to the other side of the side panel you have to attach your the longest side of your front panel to the side panel so the shorter side so where you see this corner this side that will be on the outside and this side you attach to the side panel we also want to make a hole for the pockets so i'm going to show you how go to the bottom of the side panel and i hope you can see this because it is a lot of fabric but i'm going to try i try to get it all in the screen okay you need a couple of stitch markers and with the stitch markers you measure where you want your pocket holes make sure your left and right side is exactly on the same height of course so if you from the bottom you use one inch from the bottom and then you start your pocket and do the same on the other side of course otherwise your pockets will be in a different height so let's say i have one to one and a half inches where i want to start my pocket so attach a stitch marker there and then about the size of your hand a little bit more there you put your other stitch marker and for me that is about 12 centimeters or about five inches so exactly on the same height on both sides place your stitch marker and now you know you have to close this little gap here and then we leave the space between the stitch markers open and then you close above the second stitch marker you close this line all the way to the top of the side panel then bind in bind off and weave in and then you see you created an armhole here So cut a piece of yarn, use your tail if you have a long enough tail, to close the little piece at the bottom, so from the bottom of the boat panels to the first stitch marker, then bind off and weave in your end, and then attach a piece of yarn at the next stitch marker, and then work your way up until you are at this point. So where your side panel ends 
And if you reach this point, then you can cut your yarn bind off and weave in your end. And then your front panel is attached to the side panel and you have made yourself a pocket hole. We make the pockets later on in the pattern, but you have already made your hole. And then you see here your armhole. So attach the side to the front panel exactly the same as you did for the back and the side panel. Bind off with your ends and I'll meet you back when it is attached. Okay, my front panel is attached to the side panel and I have a bucket hole and now I have an arm opening here and it is time to close the shoulder seam. Therefore, fold your front panel on top of your back panel, like this. Here is your armhole, here is your side panel. Make sure this side is lined up and here it is lined up and then here is your neckline. So I have a tail left here so I can use that to close the shoulder seam. So put your yarn through your yarn needle and then I pick my work up like this and then from the inside to the outside I go through the first stitch on this side and then from the and it is a little bit hard to see but feel with your fingers and then you can find the stitches from the inside to the outside through the stitch on the other side then from in to out through this side and from the inside to the outside to this side and repeat this all the way to the end so to the end of the front panel and then bind off and weave in your end pull tight every once in a while but it is the same procedure as you did for the attaching the side panels then repeat this on the other side, so you have your whole body assembled, then put it on, see if it fits. And if you like what you see, then you can continue making the pockets and the sleeves and the color. So I finish my shoulder seam, I bind off and weave in my end, and then I'll meet you back. Okay, my shoulder seam is closed and I finished both sides. So. I did the same on both sides of my jacket and now it's time to make the sleeves. For the sleeves you attach your yarn under your arm. So I think I start here and then, and then make a slip knot on your hook. Or make a slip knot and grab it with your hook. Pull through and chain one. You now attach your yarn. And now we can start our sleeves. In the same stitch we make a single crochet and then your yarn is attached and there is the stitch marker and you place it in the first stitch. So in this first stitch you just made you put in your stitch marker. And then we make evenly spread so in every row a single crochet and in every stitch a single crochet all the way around. For me, that is 48 stitches. So maybe for you, your holes are a bit bigger or smaller, but make in every row a stitch and in the and a stitch in the side panel, so under the arm. All the way around, I make 48 stitches for my jacket and make the amount of stitches you need to cover the whole armhole. Write that number down because you need to make exactly the same stitches on the other side as well. So just feel with your fingers. It is really annoying this first round. And I have everywhere and sticking out. <laughs> but make a single crochet in every stitch. 
across and in every row all the way around. Write your number down, the amount of stitches. Write it down and make exactly the same so you know how many stitches you need for the other side. Also write down the amount of rows, of rounds in this case. So write down the amount of rounds so you know where to decrease. I'll show you how to decrease in a moment. But first make a round all the way around the armhole of just single crochet and then I'll meet you back. I've worked my way around. I've made 48 stitches like I mentioned and now I am at the stitch with the stitch marker again. We don't close our rounds, we just make rounds of single crochets in every stitch around, only we decrease two stitches in every eighth round. So the eighth round we decrease two stitches and in the sixteenth round we decrease two stitches in the twenty-fourth round and so on. Every eight rounds you try your work on, see if it fits, see if you like what you see, maybe you need more decreases or less decreases then adjust where you like. But keep in mind that you write down where you decrease so you can repeat the process for the other sleeve. So for me I decrease in every eighth row and then I decrease two stitches. So take out the stitch marker insert your hook straight in that stitch so we don't close our rounds but just keep working in the round and make a single crochet and put your stitch back stitch marker back in the stitch so you know this is your first stitch if you want to decrease then you i don't know if you can see insert in the next stitch so yarn over pull up a loop and instead of yarning over and pull through two loops on your hook you insert in the next stitch yarn over pull up a loop then you have three loops on your hook yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook and now you make a single crochet two together and that is one decrease so you make two in every eight round or in the round you think it is necessary so this is my second round, so I don't need an increase in this round. So this round, just one single crochet in every stitch around. And repeat this until you are at round eight, then try it on, see if you like the fit. And then if you, in round eight, you decrease two stitches then try it on again see if it fits how it fits then and then make eight of seven more rounds then try it on again see if it fits and then in the eighth round so in round 16 you make two decreases again place the decreases where you want but don't place them uh, next to each other so if you make one decrease on this side then make one decrease on this side of the sleeve as well or make two under the arm but not next to each other always place a couple of stitches in between and then work your sleeve round after round don't close your rounds just keep working until your sleeve is the length you like then bind off with your end and repeat the same process on the other side and when you have two sleeves then I'll meet you back and I'll show you how to make the pockets my two sleeves are done, so it is time to make the pockets. You see here my opening, my pocket opening. So this is my front panel on top of my back panel. And this is my side panel with the opening for the, for the pockets. So we go to the inside and then you see here, it is a lot of fabric, <laughs> but I'm going to try to show you. So here is the inside. Of the pocket opening then grab your yarn find the beginning make a slip stitch make a slip knot get your hook and insert your hook in the corner of the bottom the bottom corner like this then grab your slip knot pull through 
and chain one to attach your yarn. Now we make single crochets all the way around the pocket opening and you make one single crochet in every row. For me that is 16 on this side, make one in the corner and 16 on this side and then you start here, you started here with one in the corner. So I have 34 stitches for the pockets. Maybe you have more, maybe you have less, but make one for every corner and one stitch in every row. And then you should be fine. So we attach our yarn and in the same stitch we make a single crochet. And then we make, or I make 16 on this side. Just feel with your fingers where the rows are and insert under two loops. And then you should be fine. So repeat this all the way around and I'll meet you back when you are at the bottom corner again. Okay, I've finished the round of single crochets. I've made 34 stitches. So now it is just working in the rounds without closing the rounds, without increases, without decreases. Go straight into the first stitch. And if you think it is easier, then mark your first stitch so you know where your route round starts and ends and then just make single crochets in every stitch around until your work is 12 centimeters or about five inches in length and then i'll meet you back my two pockets are done so this is the outside of my pocket but the inside looks like this just a little sleeve and it is uh, done but we need to close the bottom so your things stays in your pockets instead of falling out so we need to close the bottom and therefore i have a tail and use that tail to close it so we have here the bottom of the pocket and then go through this side and through the side on this through that side and the opposite side through this side and the opposite side so pick a stitch on this side and a stitch on the opposite side work your way all the way through the other side give it a pull every once in a while so your pocket is nice so this secure and then Work your way to the other side, picking up stitches and closing the bottom. So repeat this until your bottom is closed. I'm almost there. My last on this side and one on this side and then give it a pull again and then your pocket is closed and then you can bind off I work my way through the fabric a couple of times and then make a knot like this and then weave in your end you can just weave it in by working it through the fabric because you have all the fluff you don't see your tail end so that's nice your pocket is closed so when we turn it to the right side then you see you can put in your hand and i feel a closed bottom so repeat this on the other side so close the other pocket as well and then your jacket should look like this 
you see we're almost done and the only thing we need to do is make the color on top so close the other pocket and then we make the color okay here's your neckline this is your front with the two color pieces but we need to finish the color on top so what are we going to do you have the corner here so the front piece and the piece that is in your neck in this corner you count three stitches to the right so you see it's one two three so this is the stitch where you start and then we work all the way around the neck until three stitches on this side as well so see here the corner on the other side then in the corner and then three stitches to the left so one two three and you can feel with your fingers if you find it hard to find the stitches i mark this third stitch with the stitch marker so i know that is the place where i stop so i put my hook in this stitch so i make a slip knot grab it with my hook pull through and chain one to secure the, your yarn you can attach your yarn the way you like but this is the way i do it so feel free to attach your yarn the way you like then we make a single crochet in the same stitch so where you attach your yarn there you make a single crochet and then we have two more stitches on the front so make a single crochet in the next and in the last stitch on the front and i'll work over my tail at the same time so i don't have to weave it in later but you can leave it out and weave it in when you like and then we make single crochets in every row because here you don't have stitches at the side you have rows so we make one single crochet in every row and on the back one single crochet in every stitch here one single crochet in every row and then three single crochet in the three stitches until you have the stitch with a stitch mark and that is your last stitch so work this stitch as well this will be your last stitch so make single crochets just like you did for the whole coat all the way around making one stitch in every row and one stitch in every stitch so work your way around until you are at stitch with the stitch marker and then i'll meet you back and show you how to move on okay i worked my way around and i made my last stitch in the stitch with the stitch marker you can take that stitch marker out we don't need that anymore and now it is just like we did for the rest of the coat chain one turn your work and work your way back so work single crochet stitches in every stitch across until the end then chain one turn your work and work your way back we repeat this until your work is let me show you about the same height as this side so work your way along the neck until your work is five centimeters or two inches and then i'll meet you back okay my collar is about five centimeters or two inches so i am done and then your neckline should look like this And you can bind off weaving your end and then your coat is done i leave my coat open at the front but you can choose to sew on buttons and the holes are quite big so there you can pull through your button to close your coat first before you attach your buttons try if your button can go through the holes and then you are good to go then divide your buttons and attach them where you want 
So this was it. Your coat is done. I hope you liked it and I hope you liked the result. If you aren't subscribed yet and you want to see more, then click the subscribe button and the bell button next to it so you never miss another video. If you liked this tutorial, give me a thumbs up. And if you have a question or an idea for the next tutorial, let me know in the comments down below. See you next time. Bye. Thank you.